professional who's constantly sending emails, setting up meetings, and taking phone calls all through your phone. It's important for you to always keep your phone charged so you can always keep in touch with work. The issue is your phone will constantly run out of battery at the worst possible time. I'm sure we've all been through this issue. Suddenly your boss is calling you about an important business deal, leading you to have to scramble around and search for a charger with only seconds to pick up. You go around and ask anyone if you can borrow a charger. How embarrassing. You tried carrying a charger around, but it was just inconvenient, often forgotten at home, and just took up too much space. To avoid this, you bought a battery pack. This worked fine, but it was just a pain to keep remembering to charge it, so it eventually became useless. Don't you wish iPhones just had a built-in cord so that you'll never forget it? We found that 72% of people don't carry a backup charger or a backup battery pack because of how easily forgettable they are and just a pain to carry around. This is how we created SnapPack. SnapPack is a magnetically attached charger with a built-in retractable cord so that you will never forget your charger and that will always be with you. The charging jack snaps into the, snaps into the charger as well as, there being a, as well as there being a wire that wraps around inside, kind of like a tape measure. Snapback is slim and compact so that it isn't too bulky sitting on your phone. So it is, sorry, isn't too bulky sitting. Snapback is, no matter if you're a business professional or just a kid who loves scrolling on the phone too much, Snapback is a product for you. To start, we'll get into our market research and opportunity. We started our customer segment with our early adopters and business travelers. We see business travelers as our early adopters because they're always on the go and need to charge for their phone in order to complete their work. We also hope to get target students as our second market. And we want to test both markets or segments in our MVP process to make sure we validate them. Next up, we have market size. Our total adjustable market is around $4.5 billion. This is the total wireless charging market globally. So for our serviceable adjustable market, we have Apple or iPhone charging market wirelessly in the US, which is around $2.3 billion. Lastly, we have competitive analysis. Our biggest competitors for the charging market would be Apple chargers. The first one we have is a pretty standard Apple 20 watt lightning cord, which is also around the same price as ours, around $40. However, it lacks portability, but it does have a faster charging speed than our product. Next, we have the MagSafe charger, which is also around $40. However, it also lacks Wire or it lacks portability, however, it also is large. Last, we have the MagSafe battery pack, which is much higher price than our product would be. But it is portable, but it also must be charged beforehand, which means you can forget it. Now, getting into financials. Uh, the platform we've chosen to advertise our product on in the future is Instagram. Because we have such a wide customer segment who can use our product, we wanted to choose a platform that, can reach, that we think can reach the most amount of people. 15% of U.S. shoppers start online shopping searches on Instagram, while well, the cost per 1,000 impressions is only about $3. Because of this low cost and high engagement rate and wide customer base, this is why we've chosen Instagram to advertise on. For channels we used to sell our product on, we would like to originally start selling it directly off our website and hopefully expand to department stores across the country, such as Best Buy. Because of the type of advertisement we have chosen, uh, it will be very easy to link our landing page onto our advertisement so customers can click it, hopefully get a great view of our product board before deciding to buy it. We currently have one unit defined as one charger, which we have priced at $39.99. <coughs> we came up with this price by cross-checking it with the price of other chargers on the market and comparing it with our cost of goods sold. Although this is a price that we are fairly confident that our customers will be willing to pay, Price is something that we will be testing in our MVP along with customer segmentation. Our estimated cost to produce one charger is $14.80. We have came up with this price by compiling all the materials needed to produce one charger. The materials are one short length iPhone charger, one cord reel, one unit worth of plastic sheet to cover the outside, one unit worth of sheet metal, craft magnets, and wireless MagSafe charging con conductors. Uh, as stated before, with this price of $14.80 to produce one charger, our gross profit coming out is $25.19, not including any future labor we may need for one charger. Uh, for our first year sales and financial raise, uh, we believe we can reach 50,050 50 people with $150 worth of Instagram ads. 
Out of these 50,000 to 50 people, we estimate that about $540 will buy our product with the common conversion rate for Instagram ads. If 540 people purchase our product, this will cost $8,000 to produce, which leaves us with a gross profit of $13,616 13 year one. During our MVP process, we will be testing two key aspects of our business model. The customer segments and the product price. The two customer segments we will be testing are business travelers with iPhones and a more general segment teen to adult iPhone users. We will be attempting to reach each of these different customer bases in different ways. To reach business, business travelers, our mentor has provided us with an email list of 500 business executives. We will use the service MailChimp, send these emails in batches, to avoid them, the email getting marked as spam so they can safely make it into each of our customers' inboxes. The email will look similar to the one on screen, with a large 3D image of our product so users know exactly what the product looks like on their iPhone and how it solves their problem. Interested users can click the large Shop Now button to be directed straight to our landing page. We will use MailChimp analytics to see how many of our customers click on the email and how many of those go to our landing page. Users, once they are on our landing page, can watch a 3D animated video with more details about how our charger works and how it will solve their problem. If users are still interested at this point, they can click the large Order Now button to be taken to a checkout page, where they are prompted to enter in their email address and payment information. Once the user has completed checkout, they will be greeted with a screen similar to this, saying we are out of stock and your card has not been charged or restored. However, they have been added to our email list for future updates. This segmentation of our MVP into levels allows us to see what aspect of the process is the issue. For example, if our customer base drops by 80% from the email to our landing page, we know the email is the issue and that's what we need to fix. To, to test our other customer segment, teen to adult iPhone users, we will be attempting to reach them through Instagram and TikTok ads. The rest of the process will go pretty similar to the last. When users receive the ad on their social media feed, they can click to view our landing page, go to checkout, and receive a similar screen to last time. So far, we've talked about how we're going to test our customer segments. What about price? Through talking to different iPhone users and business travelers, we've determined that the price of $39.99 is a good price that most people are willing to pay for our product. However, this is all just talk. We need to truly test in the real world if people are willing to pay this money out of their, out of their pocket for our product. To do this, we will be conducting an eight-day test, starting the price at $29.99 and increasing the price by $5 every two days, ending the price at $44.99 at day eight. We will be sending 125 emails every two days with a one-day gap in between for time for the users to check their inboxes and open the emails. This gives an even amount of emails sent, sent for each price point so we can accurately determine which price point works best for our company. Finally, we will be spending a total of $25 per day on TikTok and Instagram ads. We will be asking for $740 to test our MVP. Let's break that number down. $300 of that money would go to, to paying a professional on the platform Fiverr to create a 3D animated video that shows exactly how our product works, what it looks like, and how it would solve the customer's problem. $40 would go to getting a MailChimp standard plan to send out mass amounts of emails to market towards business travelers. $160 of that would go to a Shopify plan to allow us to create a much more professional and user-friendly website. $10 would go to getting a domain for our website, again, to be a more professional website. $100 would go to Instagram ads. Another $100 would go for TikTok ads. And then we've already spent $30 to create a demo to show you here today. So here's our demo. It's obviously not the most uh, eye-pleasing thing to look at, but it just gets the idea down. So basically, it goes on the back of any iPhone, iPhone 12 and up, and magnetically attaches. So let's say you're at a coffee bar, you're at a restaurant, you're at a friend's house, and you get this screen pop up on your phone. All you have to do is go retract the cord out, go over to a, uh, an outlet, plug it in, take a second, and it's charged. Whenever you're done, you simply take the cord, retract it back in. The final product will obviously be much slimmer and compact, and the, record, the cord itself will be inside of it and retractable, so we won't have to wrap around and stuff like that. All right, we want to thank you all for your time, and remember to stay charged with Snap Hack.
the idea is it's because it attaches to factors, and it's still all dependent on your memory to take it off. So as long as you get home, you will have a charger and you have a charger. You're saying that connects to the phone all the time. It's pretty thick. Well, you know, I mean, we looked at the design that we have on it. It's kind of large. We have a standard version. You're going to be limited by the power. So the way, the, really the only way this product works is if you do USB or USB-C. You can't do straight to 120 because you need to reduce your iPhone's charge by, by 5 volts. Yeah. So that makes it slimmer. But now you have the issue of having to find the brick everywhere you go. Um, but I feel like long-term USB-C, USB, the, the plugs are just pretty much everywhere. And it's still bad, but I think it's a really good concept. I guess you say. I think it's like pretty brilliant in a lot of ways. Um, but you, 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 your initial hurdles are like, you know, you want to protect this. And have you thought about any indirect um, approaches to the market that might really apply well with a product like this? Did, did like, you say the question again? Yeah, it, like, like any clever ways to get this out in the market? I mean, think about it, if you're holding the phone, it's pretty good real estate for right there, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Think like company logos, promotional items, swag, yeah. you know, something like this is a great idea that you could license. So yeah. just think about some clever um, uh, approaches to market in that, in that regard. But, um, yes, because I think, I think you can charge more too, frankly. I think it's gonna cost more to make. I think your numbers are a little bit yeah. low on both sides, um, but it, yeah. I think if you guys have a really great idea of like testing your product in stages and kind of knowing where the, the bottleneck is or where the king point is and being able to get information. Um, I, I agree about it. Like, like I've never seen something like that where it's all in one hand attached to your phone. If you can solve that riddle, right you're, you're billionaires. Um, so I, I think it's a, a never, never seen a product like it. Maybe it is something swag bags at like yeah. um, conventions and things like that where, where people always need a, yep. a charger but they never think to bring it into the, the event. Um, good idea. Um, I appreciate the thoroughness of your experiment <coughs> um, in terms of your communication campaign where you've got different price points that you're starting at. I would consider flipping it. Um, because you can always start out higher and reduce the price to see where the following comes in. It's where you can go the other way, where you start lower and see, can you get the same amount of volume or traction if you start charging more? It generally goes one way. Well, I think you were going to be emailing different people. At, yeah, different people. people. Right. Right. Okay. Right. But even then, um, it's going to be easier to read, start higher than go lower. If you're emailing different people, why stagger the dates? You could do email That's one true. the you know, one price, second group, the second price, do it all at once. Let it roll. Compress your, your timeline. Brandon? Save yourself some time. You only have two and a half months to get that computer. And does anyone know the PowerPod team from Pods, what was that, 2018? Um, I no longer have their power pods, but they were about they this worked. big, and they worked. And I think we were one of the first customers buying 500 of them, and our teachers at our conference snapped them up literally right away. Because it was a small little device that you could pop in and get an hour's worth of charge all at once, or, or what have you. So the need is there, especially when you're doing travel and unexpected things happen. The nice thing about this is you don't like for purposes of this get to the next stage. You don't actually have to concentrate on how it looks or, or how it works. You can design and make something that looks perfect, but doesn't have any sort of technology in it for purposes of getting the market. So I can focus on that. I love that you came with a prototype. Yeah, that really helps me have visual. Um, I think it's a great idea. Um, you mentioned that you have two um, kind of audiences, business uh, people. 
and students. How are you engaging the students into this product? Um, we kind of have the TikTok and Instagram ads, and TikTok has kind of the youngest age demographic out of any social media apps. The whole idea is with like the advertisements we can do, we can also kind of closely monitor engagement rates on those as well with the younger audience through those ads. Are you going to do anything in the school? Uh, we don't currently have anything planned for that. So you got, so you had really high engagement from your your marketing. What is that? What does that tell you? Um, it tells us that our price and our customer segment that we have right now is correct, and it's just more evidence that we should be able to move on with the product and that it's profitable. And just maybe challenge, you know, this isn't a new, it's not a new problem, mm -hmm. right? And I think the prop. I think the problem's already been validated because there's this mass market for portable chargers and whatnot. I think your limitation is, can you pull this off like physically? Can you create a uh, you know, piece of hardware that accomplishes all this functionality that you want of you know, being able to plug in, have it not be super cumbersome? Um, and, and so I'm just wondering whether the dollars should be spent less on marketing and more on product development. Mm -hmm. um, because we know the marketing is just, Right. Um, I think my point is well taken because it's really the, the form of it is going to be key to your customer. If they don't want something that's not going to be comfortable. So I know it's, it's kind of a, a big shift because you're, you're already in it. as a group as possibly in the future meeting with like a Motorola engineer or mm -hmm. something like that and seeing you know how this can be manufactured or made so this can be slim and still charge your phone right so that's definitely something we can do for it. I would even um, I, I would say I keep this in my bag even if I don't keep it on my phone all the time because it's it's consolidating pieces that are already in my bag and it's quite expensive for the alternative. If you have a mag back from Apple, plus, you know, you know, those are expensive. Plus, you have the brick, right? Um, and so if I'm traveling and I'm like, oh, let me throw something in my bag and I don't have to buy you know, more Apple stuff, it's actually a cost savings if you're comparing directly. Uh, but I also have one to keep it on my phone full time, personally, right? Some people will, but I would just keep that in mind that there, there's an attractiveness just to the coiling cable that magnetically attaches to the phone. And that has to work. That has to work. Yeah, maybe and, and to, to follow on that, think about. I mean, form factor is going to be key here. Like, just like how many, like, like three years ago, you probably had a pop socket on the back, right? Do you still have one now? And if you're not, why not? Because it's it, it catches what you try to put in your pocket and all that kind of stuff. So, think about uh, in maybe style some interviews and ask some people and and try these prototypes or whatever. Like, what's the form factor that's going to work here? <coughs> Um, and, and then keep going with that. At 740, I don't need a recap. Can you put that slide back where you had all the, the numbers on there? I'm okay with the amount, but reallocating it towards learning more mm -hmm. about um, what's the form um, function we know what the function is that we want, but how do you make this actually happen? Because I, I totally agree with Carlos. This need is, the problem is perennial. It will always be there. Yeah, I think what we're saying is don't spend money on marketing. It's something that you don't know what it looks like. And focus all the efforts on developing, like developing concept drawing something that you have an expert opinion that says like, yeah, this is doable and technically doable. Yeah. And right. I know that probably sounds counter to everything else we've counseled the other teams on, but that's because we've got really good confidence that this problem is real, 
No one's really solved it. There's a whole bunch of people who are interested in a more portable, easy, convenient solution. So um, there are different parts of the business model canvas that we feel pretty good about, but it's can you get a prototype that is reasonable to carry and roll with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Have any friends in the engineering and design classes here? <laughs> I don't think so. Want some new friends? <laughs> 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 yeah. All right, so we're 7.40, more concept drawings, prototypes, and less marketing, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay with it. Great, thanks. Good job, guys.